Good morning. My name is Tom Court, and it's a pleasure to be with you once again to worship at Westfield Presbyterian Church. Our scripture this morning comes from the book of Matthew, the seventh chapter, verse 12. That verse is found in the larger collection of what we know as the Sermon on the Mount. In verse 12, you will find an example of what many say are very practical illustrations of what Jesus was trying to share with his disciples. Follow along with me as I read from Matthew, the seventh chapter, verse 12. And Jesus said, In everything, do to others as you would have them do to you. For this is the law and the prophets. And this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Pray with me for a moment, please. Our gracious God, as we come together once again, we ask that you quiet in us every voice but your own. Amen. Do you remember when you first learned about the golden rule? For many of us, it was probably in Sunday school as a child, or at least it was for me. It was in the third grade Sunday school class with Mrs. Brissington. Now, in those days, we were to memorize various verses of Scripture. And so Mrs. Brissington discovered early on that the best way to motivate us, especially some of us who were squirrely boys, was with a bribe. Things like a candy bar or a box of Cracker Jack. Well, the first verse we tackled was from Matthew 7, verse 12. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. The prize was a Hershey bar. And I nailed it. Just as a side note, I also memorized the names of the apostles for a box of Cracker Jack. But there wasn't a bribe big enough to get me to try to memorize the books of the Bible. When did you first learn the golden rule? I wonder at times, especially these times, whatever happened to the golden rule? Does the golden rule still work? Some years ago, a world economist wrote that the world still operates on the golden rule. That is, he or she who has the gold makes up all the rules. Interestingly, Jesus never owned a piece of gold in his life. And yet he lays this rule down for us this rule for life. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Now I need to hurry along and say that a form of the golden rule is an ancient maximum found in practically every culture and religion. And many of them hundreds of years before Jesus was born. In the Jewish Talmud, for example, you will find What is hateful to you, do not do to your fellow men. The Buddhist faith has this saying, hurt not others with that which hurts you. And the list goes on and on. It makes me wonder that since it was around for ages, why did Jesus bother to say it? And what difference does it make that he did say it? Well, as a young boy, Jesus learned the teachings from the rabbis. I'm not sure if they had to bribe him like Mrs. Brinsington had to bribe us, but he would probably have memorized these first century teachings. Do not do to others what you would not want done to you, which at first blush sounds exactly what Jesus said, but not so. Jesus takes what the great rabbi said and gives it his own holy twist. Instead of stating it in the negative, 
do not do. He spins it and puts it in the positive. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. In essence, he, he puts it in motion. Do, do unto others. Listen up, Jesus said. If you're going to follow me, you must love one another as I have loved you. And laying out the golden rule is a practical expression of what it means in part to love one another. Now, Westfield Presbyterian is a great church, a great community of faith. But we always need to remember that we are not here to love only those who love us or to care for those who only care for us. If we want to continue to grow spiritually as a church, as a community of faith, as a body of believers, then we have no choice but to follow the teaching of our Lord to treat others. And that means everyone, regardless of race, ethnicity, or sexual orientation, to treat everyone with the same love that God showers upon us. Some time back, a professor of philosophy at John Carroll University wrote an article titled, Treat Others as You Would Want to Be Treated. He reminded us that as the world becomes more and more a global community, the need for the golden rule is becoming more and more urgent. We have to learn how to treat others who are different from us with the same love that God loves us. How tragic it is that we now have a category called hate crimes and how tragic for all the recent attacks on Asian Americans. Whatever happened to the golden rule? Some years back when I was in Charlotte, there was an article by Mike McDonald who captured the essence of the urgency. He wrote, living in a diverse world is going to require some new skills, especially for people of faith. We're going to have to learn how to be good neighbors. We're going to have to learn how to live out the golden rule in our lives. But it's not always that easy. Let me see if I can bring this closer to home. Not long ago, I went through McDonald's and ordered an egg McMuffin and a hash brown. Now, I could tell by the person taking the order that she did not get it right. So I repeated it. All I would like is one egg McMuffin and one hash brown. Well, when I got to the pickup window, yep, you guessed it, no hash brown. Now, I don't need to be eating hash browns. Hash browns are not the end all of the world. But in a condescending voice with a very disrespectful tone, and if you have a condescending tone in your voice at times, I said, you forgot my hash browns. And she said, you didn't order hash browns. And I said, oh, yes, I did. And then it hit me. Or was it the spirit smacking me on the head? Here was a young woman trying to earn a living at a job that probably paid minimum wage. And I was harassing her over a hash brown. I don't think Mrs. Brissington would have been proud of me. So what does it mean to do unto others as you would have them do unto you? What's that look like? Well, here are three simple principles to try to put into place as we all try to live out the golden rule. So if you don't know where to start living out the golden rule, well, try these on for size. And here's the first. Look for the good in others. Stop being a fault finder. 
You see, it's impossible to follow the golden rule if you are always looking for the faults in others. We all have warts and pimples and imperfection. No one likes a fault finder, even Jesus. That's why he said, why do you look the speck in the other person's eye when you have a log in your own eye? There's a far better way. Look for the good in others because it's there. And I know God will help you see it because God put it there inside each person. Let's all start to look for the good in others. Principle number two, appreciate others the way you would like others to appreciate you. No one wants to be taken for granted. A simple word of appreciation and encouragement goes a long way in following the golden rule. Every day, every day, let those around you know how much you appreciate them. Believe me, they'll love you for it, and you'll actually feel better for having done it. Let's all start to show appreciation. And lastly, respect and accept people for who they are and not for what you want them to be. And isn't that exactly what Jesus did? He always accepted people as he found them. And he also helped them see what they could become. In other words, he restored their sense of self-worth. He gave them respect and dignity because each one was a child of God. And in doing so, he helped them believe in themselves because God believed in them and they loved him for it. Never have we needed a deeper sense of respect and dignity for other people than we do today. So there you have it. Look for the good in others, show appreciation, be accepting. It's time we all polished off the golden rule and started to live it. Not because of a Hershey bar or a box of Cracker Jack, but because Jesus said, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Amen and amen.